Uh, so this is the Tropical Forest Building. Um, well, my name's Siobhan, and I work here, and I've been here about three years, uh, a little over three years, and I've been in this apartment for about six months. I'm a senior zookeeper. Um, that means I've been, I have at least three years of experience under my belt. Uh, with here, I've been at zoos since I was 14. I've been in and out of different zoos. This is my fourth zoo. A lot of shoveling, a lot of hosing, uh, preparing diets, enrichment is a big one. Um, a lot of labor involved, but fun labor. All the animals here are unique in their own way. Uh, we have a lot of animals here that are under species survival plan. Fortunately, uh, it's because they are endangered, their numbers are dwindling in the wild. What we're trying to do is uh, eventually try to repopulate that population in the future. One of my favorite animals here are the lemurs, uh, the ring-tailed lemurs. The baby was born in February. Got the finger in the mouth. They just tried to draw blood from him. Not happy. And these guys are called prosimians. And prosimians are pre-primates, so they're older than gorillas, orangutans, other apes. Uh, these guys are only found in Madagascar. These are called mealworms. Uh, you can get these at any store. Uh, we feed these to the majority of our animals. The birds like them, uh, the primates like them. Uh, they're larvae, essentially, and then they turn into beetles. Top tamarins are uh, a monkey from Colombia. Um, they're one of the few monkeys that the tropical forest offers. Uh, they have a wide range of primates in this building. Um, they're under species survival plan. They're endangered as well. Um, we have a pair. Uh, we met the white crested hornbills, a male and female pair. Uh, they've been together for a few years. They're from Thailand. Um, we have five. Uh, we currently have two males and three females. Uh, the San Diego Zoo also has a male and a female pair. Uh, we have the most out of any zoo in the country, uh, and they're found from southern Thailand all the way down to Indonesia. Um, uh, they love mice. Uh, it's one of their favorite foods. Um, so what we did is we tossed food to the female, and what they do is they catch their food from the mate that they've accepted. So it's a sign of flirtation. They uh... Russian olive. Uh, this is a tree that's one of our animals' favorites. Uh, we also saw the capybara. Uh, they're a South American rodent. Uh, they're the largest rodent of the world. They're a big guinea pig. Um, they're found all throughout South America. Anacondas eat them. They're a favorite food of the anaconda, which we also have here at the zoo. Enrichment is what we do uh, here at the zoo, and it emulates what they would naturally do in the wild. The gorilla forage is a good example of that um, because we're offering food in different locations. Each one of them has their own station that they prefer and they just kind of grab what they like and then uh, go from there. The keepers sometimes add novel food as well. Novel food being something that's different from the diet that they get every day. Uh, whether it be strawberries that we get from the market, whether it be melon, uh, whether it be broccoli, they have uh, they don't eat the same thing in the wild every day so we don't always offer the same thing uh, in their daily diet. So as you first walk into the tropical forest, you see the gorillas. Uh, the, the exhibit that we have just uh, was rebuilt um, two years ago. It's been up now. So now we have the glass. The original setup was this moat area. Um, what we did was we built the glass so we can have more of an encounter with the gorillas. Uh, each gorilla has their own station that they seem to like to sit and watch the public and the people get to interact with the gorillas as well. Uh, the next zoo that has gorillas is um, the Bronx Zoo. So we get a lot of fans that come down and just to sit and watch the gorillas all day.